Hi everyone. So the other day I saw Gen Love Reviews do the 20 best products from 20 brands in under 20 minutes and I really, I really just enjoyed watching it. And I've also seen a few people that I, I'm subscribed to do it. So I thought that it'd be a fun one to do. Did have to rack my brain about it a little bit because very hard to choose from some brands. I've got my list of 20. Hopefully it's 20. I can count. And I'm gonna go in alphabetical order. Okay, so the first brand I wanna talk about is Anastasia Beverly Hills, ABH. And I'm sorry, but this is a limited edition product. It's one that I keep on my desk at all times. This is the Mario palette um, that was released back in 2016. I reach for this palette quite a bit. It's one of those palettes that I reach for when I want to do something really quick and simple that I know is gonna look good on my eyes, that I will put together without too much effort. The formula here is really reliable as well, very easy to work with, easy to blend, all that sort of stuff. So this is kind of why I keep this palette on my desk. I do have an honorable mention just because that is limited edition. I really like Anastasia Beverly Hills brushes, the ones that I've tried, and I really, really enjoy this three brush. This is my favorite brush for gel eyeliner. I feel like because it's got that kind of triangle tip, you can create a wing super easily and it just has enough precision and give to the brush to get a really nice crisp line. Second brand I want to talk about is Becca. I have tried quite a lot of the products from Becca over the years, but I would have to say the one that really comes to mind when I think of all the products I've tried that I really enjoy was the Becca Beach Tint in Watermelon. Now I don't have that product anymore because I finished that up in my last year's project pan and I was really pleasantly surprised with it. I did not expect to enjoy that product because it had been sitting in my drawer for a very long time, unused and neglected. But when I started using it, I, I just enjoyed the look it gave to the skin, really natural, beautiful. It is also a multi-purpose kind of product. It's meant for the lips and the cheeks. It's safe for both areas. But for me, I only used it on my cheeks and I really enjoyed it. I have to say I really miss that cream blush, but because I have so many, that I'm trying to use up, I haven't repurchased it. But that is one that's on my list to repurchase once I finish all of those other products up. The brand I wanna talk about is Charlotte Tilbury, another brand that I've tried quite a lot of their products um, over the years. And I feel like a lot of products have been hit and miss, but the one product that I love that I would definitely repurchase when I'm done is the Hollywood Flawless Filter, and I'm in the shade three, light medium. I can see a noticeable difference to my skin when I use this product. I feel like it gives the skin a really beautiful radiant glow. I've used it in sort of this area today. It just brightens it up. It, it looks really beautiful and smooth, like a glow from within type of product. I'm down to here. And when I use it up, I'm definitely going to repurchase this. There's nothing in my collection that gives my skin the look that this product does. I think it looks good on its own. It looks good underneath foundation. And I, I like the doe foot applicator because I just feel like it's really easy to just get it where you want it. It's a hero product for me. So I, I would definitely repurchase this after I'm done. Fourth brand I want to talk about is Dose of Colors. Since discovering Dose of Colors, I've tried a lot of their products. Mostly eyeshadows, but I've got their liquid lipsticks, their lip glosses, their um, ideal duos, their liners. And oh, this was a really hard one because it was two palettes that I was tossing up between. The Friendcation palette, which I love. I think it's an awesome palette. The shimmers are gorgeous, but also, and this is the one I've been using super frequently, is the Pretty Cool palette. In fact, it's in my everyday makeup bag right now. Let me get it out. Now, this is a palette I actually purchased last year in December, and I had not used it until March, around March this year. And I have to say, I really like this so much. I actually even enjoy this more than the Baked Browns palette. I feel like, for some reason, these shades complement my skin tone more than the the warm tone shades. In general, I mean, I've got a lot of their five pan palettes and I find that this formula is really good. They're easy to blend and work with. I feel like they last on the eyelids. I like to kind of go in here with these two shades in the crease and then use a combination of these two for the outer V and just lining the eye. And it just looks great. I took this to Japan as well. That's kind of when I realized how much I really enjoyed this palette. So I have been using this a lot. I'm, I'm really glad that it is permanent. Not that I ever will finish this probably. One of the first color corrective products that I first used ever was from Giorgio Armani. This is the Master Corrector in 02. I've gotten kind of discoloration under here and really dark circles. And I feel like even when I just add concealer, a normal concealer, even though it's got light reflecting particles, it just doesn't, it's not enough for me. I do need an orange corrector. And this is a really nice one. It sits well under the eyes. 
it's hydrating. I feel like this makes such a difference when I wear this. It's just a really nice formula as well. I've heard that this is discontinued. I really hope that's not the case because I think this is such a beautiful product. From Hourglass, another one that I found very difficult to choose from because I feel like Hourglass is one of those brands that is pretty consistent. I feel like a lot of their products are pretty good along across the board. Um, but I really love this ambient lighting powder in this particular shade, Radiant Light. I have panned a whole one of these in the ambient lighting palette. And so I decided to buy this when I finished that. And I really like this. For me, this is actually kind of a bronzy blush for me like I feel like this is a really kind of sun-kissed blush it's the perfect color the perfect texture for my for my coloration I do have quite a massive dint in here dent in here um, and I never want to be without it honestly it's my favorite blush if you want to see me wearing it I'm gonna link that video where I decluttered but swatched all my blushes so you can see what it looks like on my skin Next brand is Inglot, and my favorite product from that brand is the Duraline. It is such a good product for doing a lot of things, creating a gel liner out of a powder product. This is also good for reviving products as well, like the Super Shock Shadows. I saw Beauty News do an experiment on um, all the things that they had heard were good for reviving it, and this was the product that kind of topped all of those. This is actually my second bottle. It's just such a great mixing liquid. Next brand is It Cosmetics. I have tried a few of their products, the CC creams, um, some of their powders, and the product that I really, really love is this brush. It's a Heavenly Lux flat top buffing brush in number six. I think I bought this when I was in America at Ulta. I like this brush specifically for buffing out and blending out products that are cream products like blushes and bronzers. It's a good size, first of all, but also it just kind of, because it's dense enough and it's got the enough give in the bristles, it just makes it so easy. I am definitely considering buying another one of these brushes because whenever I get this dirty and I have to use something else, I really miss it. No other brush kind of gets that same blend as this one in the amount of time it does. It's really quick. And it's really soft as well. Linda Holberg is the next brand and I'm going to be talking specifically about this one eyeshadow. This is an eyeshadow that is in both the Metallic Mysteries 1 and Original 1 and 2 palette. And that is Collision. I love this shade so much. So I'm actually really glad that I have another one. It's got a really beautiful transformative quality about it. It just adds that gorgeous shine. The texture itself is really, it's kind of like a dry texture. It is like my favorite eyeshadow topper can obviously be used by itself, but I feel like I don't have an eyeshadow quite with this intensity um, and the shine that this has. It looks so gorgeous over other eyeshadows. It looks beautiful by itself. It looks beautiful and wet. I wish that this was available as a single because I think that a lot of people would enjoy it without having to just buy the whole palette. It is honestly what makes these palettes so special to me. It's definitely one of my favorite shades in my entire collection. So from MAC, it was a hard one. I feel like they've got so many hero products, but the one that I always kind of repurchase, gravitate to, is the Fix Plus. I feel like it's a really versatile product. It's good for kind of like, if you've over powdered your face, to kind of settle the face and make it look a little bit more natural. It's good to use to wet your brush. I feel like this is one of the better sprays for that purpose and why I like to use it because I don't feel like it damages my brushes either. I like the smell. I like the mist dye. I feel like it's got a really nice, really kind of fine spray. And the smell as well is also not offensive. It's not super strong. They have different scents as well. I have tried some of their other other ones like the Gold Plus. I don't like that. I just think the original is just the best, hands down. Next product that's also not in front of me because it's in my everyday makeup bag when I put a picture on the side is the Marc Jacobs highlighter in 42 blacker. I've already used two up. I'm on my third pen. It is the best black eyeliner I've ever used. When I tight line, it actually stays on my waterline. All my other liners don't have the lasting power that that liner does. And I also like that it's automated, so you don't have to sharpen, because sharpening is annoying. And who's got time for sharpening their pencils? Not me. I don't feel like I need any other black liners because I've got, I found my perfect black liner. From the drugstore, I've got this Instant Age Rewind from Maybelline is the brand that I'm gonna talk about in medium. I like this concealer. I've gone through probably five or six over the years. 
I think this is a good concealer for the drugstore, my favorite concealer from the drugstore. I think that this is a really nice concealer for kind of under the eyes. I feel like it doesn't emphasize dry areas. I've got some concealers that look terrible over dry patches. The coverage is not too bad either. Like I said, on days where I have, I'm like really dark on eye circles, I definitely need to add a corrector to this because it's not gonna kind of cover up all those dark circles. A lot of people do complain about the sponge tip. I don't mind it because it just makes it kind of quick and simple. You don't need extra tools. Like I can just dot this on, pat it out with my finger. So I can sort of see that this might be good for like people that are lazy and don't have extra tools and time and all that. Definitely one that I keep my eye out for on this price line, 50% sales. Next brand is Melt Cosmetics. I love their OG stacks and this one in Dark Matter is my favorite in terms of color story. The formula is amazing. Some of the, my favorite eye looks I've created has been with this stack. I love this black. I think it's a really, really good black. It's intense, intensely black. It doesn't like sheer out to gray. It's, it's easy to blend. The red is gorgeous. These two brown shades are beautiful in the outer V. One of my favorite ways to wear this, I'll put it on the screen. I know people are like the price is really high. It really is for, for eyeshadows. But if you're willing to splurge um, and you want, you know, some really good mattes in these colors, you're not gonna go wrong with this dark matter stack. Beautiful. From NARS, I would have to say my favorite product from them is actually one of their blushes, Luster. This is from the One Shocking Moment palette. Probably gonna take me quite a while to hit pan on this. I feel like NARS um, powder products do last quite a bit because they're so firmly packed and you don't need that much on the cheeks to show up beautifully. This is a gorgeous orange shade. It's got a little bit of a golden sheen to it. And I just, I just love my orange blushes and I like blushes that have a, that aren't completely like matte because I feel like when they've got a little bit of a sheen to it, it just looks a little bit more uh, youthful on the skin. And I just love this shade so much. If I ever do finish up this whole shade, I would definitely purchase a single. From Natasha Denona, this is actually a prop that I haven't had for a very long time. I bought it maybe three months ago and I really enjoy this so much. This is the Face Glow Foundation in SPF 15. I don't even know what shade I am because it's totally rubbed off. Put it on the screen if you want to know in case you want a kind of a color match. But I just, I think that this foundation is really beautiful. It's um, kind of a thick foundation actually. It, it feels kind of a little bit tacky and it just looks really beautiful on the skin. The first time I heard anyone talk about it was Samantha Ravindal. She was raving about how she loves it. And I feel like me and Samantha have, I have similar preferences to her. I like my skin to look radiant and dewy. And I also have kind of dry skin too. My skin is better when I'm pregnant. I don't know why. It's really good if you have drier skin, kind of gives it that radiance back to otherwise dull and dry skin. Like I can't really tell, but I feel like I've used up at least half of this because I've been using it quite frequently since I bought it. Although I am like just trying to stop myself using it because I have to focus on my Project Pan foundations, but I really, really like that foundation. I feel like it's one of those foundations that people either love or they hate, but if you've got kind of dry skin and you want that radiance back, you want um, kind of medium coverage, this is a really good option. Pat McGrath. That was really hard. It's like choosing from your children. Again, this is a limited edition, so I'm really sorry if you haven't got this, but this is the ultraviolet blue pigment from their Dark Star collection. Hands down, one of my favorite blues in my collection. It's gorgeous. It's really deep and dark and sexy. It's got both light blue sparkles as well as kind of purple sparkles in it and it's just beautiful. I like this as a statement eye. If you are looking for something similar, City on the eyelids looks pretty damn similar. It's only really to discerning eye that you can tell the difference. This has definitely got more complexity. It's deeper and richer than City, but they are somewhat similar if you're looking for something similar enough to this shade. I also do have an honorable mention just because that is a limited edition product and that is Via Nectar from the Sublime palette. Via Nectar is definitely one of, again, one of my favorite eyeshadows in my entire collection um, because it's just beautiful. It's got a, it's like a peachy pink and in general, this is one of my favorite smoky eye palettes. The annoying thing about this blue one is that it does stain a little. The next brand is Rouge Bunny Rouge. 
One of my favorite products, and I have used up a whole bottle of this, is the bronzer, the liquid bronzer in As If It Was Summer Still. This bronzer is so beautiful on the skin. It blends out so beautifully and seamlessly. It honestly looks like your skin has a natural bronze to it. Um, and it's absolutely gorgeous. You don't actually need as much as I've just pumped out, but it is beautiful. Um, if you want to see it in action again, I'll link my project pan from last year in the comments below. Um, oh, my whole hand is super bronze now. But I think this is gorgeous. It's a beautiful, beautiful bronze shade. <laughs> like my hand looks like, you see the difference? <laughs> this is my favorite liquid bronzer. Love it so much. That's why I've repurchased a whole bottle of it because I really missed having this in my life. Couldn't do this video without talking about one of my favorite brands, Suku. Pretty much I feel like I've tried 90% of their range. So my favorite product from all the products I've tried from Suku is the Extra Real Lipstick in 11. Tried to find it, freaking out a little bit because I can't find it. It's definitely somewhere, it's in one of my bags. It's my perfect nude. It's a beautiful formula. It's nice and creamy, nourishing for days where your lips just want a bit of a break. Looks very flattering on the lips doesn't emphasize lines. Thank goodness it's not limited edition like a lot of the Suku products I love and adore. Last brand I'm going to talk about is Tatcha. Tatcha is a brand that came onto my radar maybe two years ago and the product I'm going to talk about and that is my favorite from Tatcha is the Silk Canvas Primer. I am not a primer person. I don't use primers generally before I you know wear my foundation. My skincare is my primer. And so when I heard people talk about this, I heard Mel Thompson rave about it, I was like, okay, I want to give this a go. Let's just see if this makes a difference to my skin. And I feel like it's the only one of the few primers that I can see a difference. It kind of like keeps my makeup on. It makes it last longer, smoothens out my skin. For those that you haven't tried it, it is a kind of a silicone type primer. You don't need that much. I feel like when I started using it, I probably used too much, which is probably why I finished up so quickly. Like I said, I haven't repurchased it, mostly because I, I've got so many primers to go through in my project pan. For someone that doesn't do primer, uh, it's kind of ridiculous. But if I was just to have one primer, that's the primer I'd have. And I will repurchase it once I go through the rest of my collection. So apparently I can't count. My 20th, I totally forgot that I left off my list, is ColourPop. And the product I actually really enjoy from ColourPop is their lippy stick in the particular shade Ziggy. I think it's a gorgeous shade. The shade is kind of like a terracotta brick red and it's very pigmented one swipe coverage type of thing the formula although it's matte i don't feel like it's uncomfortable it's actually really it goes in really nice and smooth out of all my lippy sticks and i do have quite a few that's the color that i reach for the most frequently so those are the 20 best products from 20 brands and hopefully it's under 20 minutes i know because i rambled a lot i hope you found this uh fun to watch let me know what your favorite products were did i mention any of your favorites let me know if you want to see the 20 worst. I could probably come up with 20 worst. I don't know, actually, I, maybe it's hard because I feel like uh, I kind of forget the products I don't like because I just chuck it out. But if you want to see that, let me know. It's all fun and games, it's all makeup, it's not that deep. Anyway, I'm gonna go because I've got a coffee here, it's getting cold, and um, I'm gonna let you get back to your day. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.